welcome to another episode of the Rich and Famous! Today, we'll be looking into the life of a guy who has made prison living ecstatic! It's become the new rave! Everybody's wearing orange or black and white stripes. He's a trendsetter. He is taking it to a new level. I'm talking about the Digital Prisoner. Thank you. Thank you, Robin Leach. Uh, I'm glad to be on the show. Grew up watching you. Uh, you know, long time fan. First time being on the show. Hey. So, all right. Today we're going to be talking about uh, living. Yes, something we all do. Uh, standard of living. Uh, the amount of goods and services available to the average person. All right, This can increase by lowering prices. That means everything gets cheaper. That's something that generally doesn't happen. Prices don't tend to go down. Once they go up, uh, they tend to stay up. Uh, but it is one way that you can increase the standard of living or raising incomes. And the problem of which, um, as we've talked about before, if you raise, like, for instance, minimum wage, uh, then that causes everything else to increase, uh, the prices of everything. So, but these are two ways that you can increase the standard of living. Now, if you look at more of a specific, uh, now, on a specific level, if I were to take a job which I got paid much more money, well, then my standard of living would increase. I would be able to afford more things. Uh, whereas, or if I moved to a country in which, uh, the cost of everything was a lot cheaper then my standard of living could increase. Or, or for example, just staying in the country, if I were to move from Louisiana to New York, um, I would cost me a lot more to live. Um, uh, and so, uh, this would decrease my standard of living. Uh, increasing productivity can cause this to happen too. If I start producing, or if my productivity gets a lot more done, uh, then that would allow for, you know, lowering of prices because there's a lot more, or it would allow for me to earn more. There, the increasing in productivity uh, helps, and it keeps there from being so much uh, wasting time and so forth that you're being more effective and getting more done. Uh, competition uh, will also cause productivity to increase. Um, think about this. I mean, how many times have you ever been doing something and you try ten times harder because you're competing against somebody? I know, man. Whenever somebody's like, oh, yeah, I bet you I can beat you. And it's like, man, boom, boom, boom. I'm, I'm going hard at it because uh, I really want to beat this person. Uh, so, And think this happens in business, too. People want to do better this company wants to do better this branch wants to do better than the other ones it wants that recognition of being the best uh, i know when i worked in retail uh, they put on a competition and man i would like go crazy on selling stuff because uh it was this competition and i wanted to be the best in the business uh, competition spurs, what we were talking about. Competition can increase productivity by it drives people to work harder and faster, pushes people to improve their skills and knowledge. Uh, if I want to be the best in the business on a bunch of stuff, I got to know what I'm talking about. I got to increase what I know and how I know how to do it. It encourages finding new and better ways of doing things. Hey, I'm trying to beat you in this competition, so I'm going to try to figure out a way that you didn't think of of how to do this you know and there's a lot of shows out there uh that show us all these new ways you know where people are competing uh to do things especially a lot of these reality shows now uh you see people competing and competing and then somebody will come up and do something totally different than the way everybody else did it and you know they did it way better um and it eliminates unproductive or inefficient competitors uh competition tends to put these people out of business most free market systems have a system for education in order to help with competition, uh, in order to make people much more competitive. That way it increases their skills and knowledge so that they are more competitive and they can come up with these uh, better ways to do things and so forth. Who's on first? Specialization. 
people specialize uh, on specific jobs. You can focus on a specific, uh, narrowly defined task. Uh, like I could be the best uh, chainsaw juggler in the world, but I can now I suck at juggling bowling balls. But man, I can juggle them chainsaws. Uh, you know. And I, I know that's kind of a crazy scenario, but I'm just throwing something out there. Um, it's easier to focus and learn one thing extremely well than to do many things uh, just as well. Th take some of our top athletes. Uh, Michael Jordan pops in my head. Uh, Michael Jordan's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. But when Michael Jordan went to play baseball, eh, he was so-so. You know, it wasn't all that great. Uh so he was better on that specific task. And this happens in so things like assembly lines, teachers, you know. I think that's why teachers don't generally teach all subjects. Uh, as you get older and more specific, teachers teach specific subjects uh, because they are focused on that. So think about some other jobs that you can think that are uh, very uh, task or specialized uh, that are out there. Trade. Uh, trade is an exchange of goods and services for other commodities such as money. Um, it allow it can allow resources that would be just be wasted to be traded, which increases efficiency. Imagine if I have, uh, or just imagine I have a ton of gold. There, there's so much gold at my place that I mean I, I use it to pay my driveway. You know I, I just bling like that. Uh, so it's just wasting here. But gold is very valuable to most of the world. So, by trading it, I get something I would consider valuable, something I might not have. Let's say I don't have uh, bread. Man, I'll give you, you know, a big handful of gold for a loaf of bread, you know, because gold isn't as valuable. It's just being wasted here, whereas the bread, that's something I don't have, and so therefore... It allows these things to be traded, which increases the efficiency of these uh, products and our resources. Uh, diversify. It creates differences. Uh, and that's what trade can help diversify an area or, and, and people. Uh, if you look at the world today, it's becoming way more uh, diversified. Uh, but you still have like countries that specifically eat foods, you know. Uh, you know, they have their own type of food, and that's what's big in that area because that's what they've raised, you know. That's what grows there. Uh, so it, trade opens up a lot of windows. But there is downside to trade. Trade can lead to a loss of jobs in a region or area if people are, are buying the cheaper goods from another area or region. Let's say I can make that good ten times cheaper than here in Louisiana – than they can in California. And so I started selling my goods here from Louisiana over into California. And they buy it there. Well, that puts all the people that are in California out of business because nobody's buying theirs because it costs them more to make. And this happens mainly with, like, especially countries. You know, other countries have cheaper wages, so therefore people businesses go there, so they have to pay the people less and then still sell their goods. Um, and this causes a lot of job loss. Uh, protectionists. These are policies designed to keep a country's economy, businesses, and workers safe from competition. There are things such as tariffs, uh, which are taxes on imports. So these things, these other countries are sending in, are getting charged a tax to make their price of them go up so that they're not so much cheaper than the local commodity. And then subsidies. Uh, they're government payments to give uh, given to support locally produced goods. A, a lot of you see in uh, farm subsidies uh, and so forth, uh, in which the government helps pay uh, farmers so they earn extra, have more money, uh, even whenever the crops aren't producing well or so forth, uh, because that's something that we need uh, in order to be uh, made so that we can all eat. Bob's Motor Shop. Yeehaw. All right. Business cycle. Uh, it's regular It's regular changes in the economy's activity. Uh, we talked a lot about this uh, or some about this in government about how it works. 
Um, and it's a cycle similar to the weather. Uh, there's ups and there's downs kind of, uh, throughout the cycle, and it's, it cycles through um, how things go. Um, well, I thought I had a graph in there, uh, but it, 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 it tends to go upwards somewhat, um, but it goes through, uh, you know, there's doing well, then you have a trough to where you're not doing as well, but then you, you'll increase and you have peaks so that you're doing, you know, at your high points, and then you have, like, kind of your middle road uh, of that. Um, balloons, tires, and egos. Ooh, love me some egos. All right, inflation. Uh, rising prices of goods and services. Uh, inflation rate measures the speed at which the prices rise and indicate how well people's income can keep up with it. Uh, so as we see the prices of take a gallon of milk is one thing people generally look at. Um, you know, years ago you could buy a gallon of milk for two dollars. Nowadays you're buying a gallon of milk four dollars, five dollars. Uh, depending on where you are uh, in different parts of the country, you're buying it for even more than that. Uh, hyperinflation is fast-moving inflation that surpasses the wage raises. Um, so that means that the inflation is going beyond that normal raising, that as raises go up, inflation goes up. Well, when it hyperinflates, that inflation is going up way beyond what the wages went up. Uh, stagnation. It's a lack of growth of an economy uh, loss of jobs and wage uh, cuts tend to happen during this point. Um, and stagflation, uh, and, and I know they're very close, so be careful with them. Uh, wages fall and prices rise. Uh, so that's when people are starting to get paid less, but the price of everything else continues to go up. Uh, demand pull inflation. It's a rise in prices driven by consumer demand. You know, hey, we want a lot of for example, all right, Xboxes, you know, the new Xbox One, those prices are high because uh, there's a huge demand. Uh, and I know that's actually kind of a bad example because they, they started out high. Um, but, um, I, you know, here's a good example I, I can remember. Uh, the movie Boondock Saints, if you ever saw it, I remember when it first came out, I worked in a movie store, and... It was out, and it was not a big hit, and so it sold for like nine bucks, nine ninety nine. Well, people started seeing it, and people, more and more people wanted to buy this, and so before long, this movie turned into a nineteen ninety nine uh, movie. So that's demand pull inflation, cost push inflation, a rise in prices driven by rising production costs. So that means if it's costing me more to you know, pay for the gas in order to ship my goods. It's costing me more to pay for my workers, uh, the my resources in order to buy that I buy in order to make this. All these prices are going up, so therefore uh, I need to raise the prices of what I'm selling. That's that cost push inflation. Uh, demand happens in a growing economy. Cost usually follows demand. Uh, phases of the business cycle. Uh, and here. This is what I was talking about earlier. Boom is high employment and uh, rising demand. Uh, recession is a general slowdown in the economic activity. A depression is a period of decreasing economic activity, falling prices, and high unemployment. Um, recovery, going from depression back to an equilibrium. And this is where a lot of people say that we're trying to head to right now in our country. Uh, other people ag uh, argue that we are still in a recession and barely fighting out of a depression. Um, so, you know, depending on who you ask is where we are in our economy. Pretty much everybody just agrees we are not in a boom. Um, and they try to, the government interferes and a lot of the interference winds up trying to prevent booms and depressions and recessions. They try to hit this point right here is that equilibrium. Try to keep the booms lower and the recessions higher. Uh, there are many factors that affect the cycle. Inflation, wages, unemployment, trade, growth, GDP, investments, production levels. So there are a lot of things that, that go into figuring out where the business cycle is. Uh, G-Man to the rescue. And as I mentioned, the government tries to uh, 
control this. Uh, this is the old chairman of the uh, Fed, Ben Bernanke. Uh, we've recently gotten a new chairman of the Fed, and it's the first woman who's held this position, Janet Yellen. Um, monetary policy. Uh, they use this in order to regulate the money supply through various tools of government action. Uh, they control interest rates. You heard her talk the other day. Uh, she mentioned how uh, we still need low interest rates in order to try to get the economy going again. Uh, and they were talking about, hey, we don't need to put as much money out. We don't need to have as much money out there. And the Fed helps control the amount of money in, in circulation um, because things are slightly getting a little better. Uh, but, uh, and so those kind of things are what the Fed do in order to try to balance out that business cycle. Uh, regulation of the banking industry, highest interest, higher interest and stricter regulations on banks equal slow growth, lower interest and low, looser regulations on banks equal faster growth. Uh, fiscal policy, that's tax, taxation and spending practices in the government. Now the government uh, also, they can cut or raise taxes in order to uh, create a stimulus to boost the economy. Uh, and they can increase or decrease government spending. If you're trying to make the economy grow, you want to increase spending. If you're trying to keep it from going, from hitting that boom and so it busts, uh, you want to decrease spending. And, you know, you want to cut taxes in order to increase uh, the growth of the economy and raise taxes to slow down the growth of the economy. A budget deficit. Its income is less than expenditures, and our government has been out, uh, operating at a budget deficit for many years now. Uh, a budget surplus is just the opposite, is when your income is greater than your expenditures. Uh, other influences. The weather, the politics. You know, like right now we're having all this bad weather. So uh, that in uh, affects everything that's all the prices uh, affects the economy uh, you know especially in particular areas you know if a tornado or a hurricane come through it can destroy a, a local economy uh, politics you know the decisions made by presidents uh, and other politicians can lead to great effects on the economy uh, retail up and down okay retail is really hard to stay profitable uh, they're constantly looking for new and inventive ways uh, to make money um, because the internet has totally changed the game. Um, and for instance, I have FYE and Hot Topic. If you ever noticed uh, over the years, Hot Topic has gone into, started to sell CDs and, and so forth, which was FYE, FYE specialty. FYE has started to sell shirts and all the other stuff that Hot Topic sells. So they're starting to try to branch out uh, and come up with new ideas in order to try to save their businesses uh, in order to stay profit. Volume is something that can help out with this. Uh, the more you sell, the lower price you can sell. Uh, wholesales, they sell to other companies rather than to consumers. Uh, that's why a lot of times you hear people say, oh, we're selling at wholesale prices. Um, economies of, set, of scale, uh, increased efficiency and often reduced costs resulting from an increase in the size of operations or amount of production. If I want to create uh, one uh, of something, one car, it probably cost me a lot more money than if I was creating a thousand cars uh, because I wouldn't have all the stuff set up and, and so forth to do that. Uh, retail costs, they have overhead, the cost of the physical aspects of doing business. They have to lease their building or rent their building or build their building. They have to pay the wages. Uh, they have utilities uh, like lights and, and uh, f bathroom facilities and so forth. So, uh, but these internet stores cut a lot of that out. They don't have to have a lot of those things. Um, there's still overhead for internet businesses uh, such as web development. They have to develop their website, uh, their software. They have to pay for their bandwidth and so forth. But that usually equals out to be much cheaper uh, than the overhead of retail stores or uh, you know your physically based stores uh, think of some other uh, benefits uh, of internet versus uh, the actual store uh, and take Amazon for example uh, shipping is a large cost to pay uh, f for buying online you know and Amazon in order to attract business they stopped uh, they give you discounts on shipping you know you buy so much you get free shipping 
Uh, and this has earned them a lot of business, and they don't use the money they spend on shipping is coming from because uh, marketing, because they don't market. A lot of people nowadays, Amazon is a household name, and that's because everybody tells everybody, oh, well, go to Amazon and get it. Go get it from Amazon. Uh, because uh, everybody is so impressed that you can get free shipping. So until next time, deuces.